Today, in the Invincible CEO Studio, we are going to be sharing revision success stories. Now, are you ready for an amazing success story? Are, are you ready to see how you can connect to revision in the now moment and start to see the effects almost immediately? These are success stories that I personally have experienced, and I will be sharing more and more success stories. So if you'd like to see your success story featured here on the channel, please share your information either in the comments or send me an email at denise at the invincible ceo.com. So now welcome back to the invincible CEO YouTube channel which I call the Mind Gym for Manifestation, the place where we make manifesting natural, easy, and fun like it was meant to be. That by the end of this video, you're gonna be going, oh my God, it's that simple. Wow, just wow. Now, here's the thing I'll tell you. I am a storyteller. I love to tell stories, and my stories have stories within stories. So there's gonna be a success story within the success story, and then there's gonna be a bonus success story at the end. Now, what makes the bonus success story really special is how in real time, I got someone in an airport to change their behavior without even saying a word to them. So now my other story within the story is a tactic that I used as an investigator and interrogator to either put you at ease or to get you to confess. And by the end of this video, you're going to be saying, oh my God, Didi, it's that simple. Really? That's what revision is? Because I'm going to show you revision in both directions. So just a reminder, my name is Didi Povernick and I'm the Invincible CEO and I'm the last most exciting manifestation coach you're ever going to need. Not that you need a coach. I'm really just a big kid at heart and I've dedicated my life to guide others to make the most conscious, powerful decisions in the now moment and anchor those decisions so deeply. Manifestation is meant to be natural, easy, and fun. It's not meant to be a choice. Sure, it's not meant to be a job. So join me as I help you cut to the front of the line of your deepest desires and manifest a life you love with ease. Why? Here it comes. You know it. Say it with me because I want to see you win big and win all the time. This channel is all about you winning big quickly while experiencing fulfillment of your most inner desires to live that amazing life you love. All right. Without any further ado, let's get into the success story. So for those of you who don't know, I'm in Pennsylvania. And I know that I'll be moving to Florida. So Florida is on my mind a lot. Give me the beach. Give me the sun. I am a happy camper. I have a client who has a condo down in Hallandale Beach. And from time to time, she allows me to stay there, whether it's business or personal. Uh, but it's been a while. It had been a while since I had been there because I had been so busy. So when I bumped into her, she's like, why aren't you like almost like hollering at me? Like I have this, it almost felt like she had it for me. And why wasn't I going there? Because why else would she have this beautiful condo to share? So I wasn't expecting to be going in July, but the opportunity came up. The time was right. And uh, it's one of those vacations where I got to go on my own, even though my partner was invited. We both decided that I probably need a little time to just chill and really disconnect from making videos, from doing uh, client sessions and doing some investigations I was doing at the time. So I go down. And I'm thrilled. And my day was like, get up, go to the beach, come home, have some lunch, go to the pool. Get up, go to the pool, come home, have some lunch, go to the beach. And then every night um, I would do a walk on the beach at night, but I also would go in the morning because I love the sunrise at the beach. So I'm kind of giving you a little uh, backup information. And I noticed, especially when I'm in Florida, because I'm out of my normal routine, manifestation seems to be more prominent, more I'm aware because I don't have all the contingencies and all the storylines that I'm in when I'm at home. So it's sort of like you vacate, that's why it's called a vacation folks, you vacate the reality that you're in and then you're more aware in the reality that you go to because it's not your normal routine. You're really taking yourself out of your normal routine, but after you're there a couple of days, you can create a whole new routine. So while I'm there, uh, I'm really excited to be there. And the first thing that happened, here's a little, our first little sidetrack story, is I had been there several times and it's one of those condos and I think it has maybe about 12 or 13 floors. And because of when we went before, we only parked in the front. Um, this time I got access to go in and park around the side. And that's when I noticed that there was a pool that went with the building. And I would have swore that I, I remember asking before, is there a pool here? And her telling me no. 
And that I thought it was really odd because most buildings in Florida, especially in a resort town, have pools. But I accepted all the other times that I went there. I didn't know there was a pool. I would have been bouncing back and forth like I did on this occasion. So that was the first thing. The fact that that there was a pool and my mind was blown. I even sent a, a message. I called my partner and said, did you know there was a pool here? He goes, I thought she said there wasn't a pool. I'm like, well, there's a pool in this reality. So I'm, I'm now in heaven because I can now go back and forth between the beach and the pool. So another little side story, another little thing that happened is when my partner and I had been in Florida previously, we had a list, like we wanted to see a baby turtle go into the ocean and we got to see, and we were like his escorts. It was the last turtle and we got to escort him down to uh, the water and watched him slide on his belly into the water. And we saw like there were birds off to the side that were just like waiting to snap him up, but not on our watch kind of thing. But one of, I always go looking for certain types of shells that look like hearts or different things. And something on my list for a while has been a sand dollar that I wanted to manifest a sand dollar. Now, this wasn't this trip. This was one previous. And again, I like to get up and see the sunrise and go run on the beach or walk on the beach every morning. So that was our last day. Now, this is important because there seems to be a last day theme going on. It was our last day back on that trip. We had seen the sunrise together. And my partner decided to go and have some breakfast because he was going to head to the gym. And I was going to have my workout on the beach. So while I was there... I'm walking and I walk where the, the waves just hit the, the sand and it's nice and wet and the waves go over your feet and it reminds me of like all the waves of thought coming in. Some reach your feet and some don't. And it's, you know, just kind of this beautiful contemplation being there in the now moment and, you know, thinking, okay, on check, checking off my list. I saw this, we did this. Oh, my sand dollar. I haven't got my sand dollar yet. And so as I'm walking, three people walk in the opposite direction past me. They're more on the drier sand. And that's when I look down at the edge there and I saw something green. I'm like, what the heck is that? And why didn't the people who just walked by see what I'm seeing? And as I'm bending down, I'm realizing it's money. The, 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 the beach is paying me. I'm like, oh, wow, I get paid to walk on the beach. So I pick the money up and I open it up and it's a wet dollar. And it's a sandy, wet dollar. And I right away, I'm like, my mind has jokes, right? I asked for a sand dollar, meaning, you know, the, the little animal type of thing that looks like a flat shell. And I'm getting a sandy dollar. And I, I turn to the ocean and the sun, and I'm like, you got, you got jokes, right? Like, you know, I, my mind is punking me here. Um, but it made me realize that I had to revise because my mind is always giving me it, it, what it thinks it can in the environment, in the reality that I'm in. So that was the reality of a sandy dollar. And I thanked my mind for that's what it thought I wanted because it's like, you know, that magic genie that, that plays jokes on you. Um, but I, I reminded, I gave it a vision of this is what I meant. And I find that when I do a revision and I do a visual versus words, because you can see sand dollar, how the mind can play with the words. That's why it's not about the words. It's about the implication. I revised immediately that I wanted to see a sand dollar, meaning the actual animal shell type of thing. So there's some revision there. First one was the pool that didn't exist in the previous realities now existed in this one. And it looked like it had been there from the creation. I looked up when the building was built, it was like in the fifties. So, and it looked like that kind of style that has been around for a while. It just was new to me and we had never explored back there, but we had seen what was back there, but never once what I have thought, what I was looking at was a pool in a pool house. So that was the first one. And then the Sandy Dollar. Okay, your mind is always going to be offering you 24-7 feedback of what it is that you're expecting. And when you pull yourself out of your normal routine and you're not weighed down by all of the assumptions that you're normally in, you'll start to see manifestations a lot faster. So pay very close attention when you're getting pulled out of your normal routine. All right, so now back to uh, the real meat of the story, and then we'll get to the bonus one. So once again, it's the night before I'm about to leave. I think it was Friday night. I was leaving on a Saturday. Now, here's a little side note. I could have stayed there for the whole month of August. I went down, I think, like July 22nd, and I was coming home maybe seven or eight days later. I forget the exact dates. But if I wanted to, nobody else was going to be in the, the condo, not until the beginning of September for Labor Day. So I chose how when I wanted to go down, how long I wanted to stay. And I was realizing the night before that as I was going uh, to the beach for my, my night walk, I was starting to contemplate, okay, this time is when my flight is leaving. 
I should be out the door by this time because I got to return a car. So, but I, I want to go for my morning uh, sunrise, but I don't want to rush off the beach. I don't want to rush tomorrow because I have to get back because I have to get out the door. I think I, I was having to leave somewhere around noon. Um, and I, 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 even though there was like four hours there, it just felt tight. And I really had this deep desire to have an extra hour should I choose with my morning sunrise routine to use the full hour if I wanted to. So this was when I was at the ocean and it was literally a block away from where I was staying. By the time I walked home and I got in the building, I got a text from the airlines saying that my flight was delayed an hour. They're texting me the night before, which I thought was really odd. Like, how do you know the night before the flight is gonna be an hour late? And it struck me as odd, but I still didn't realize what was happening. And it didn't, I didn't put the connect the dots for the bridge of incidents yet that it had something to do with the conversation that I just had with myself at the beach that I could use the extra hour. So it didn't click yet what was going on. And it may not have had there not been two more things. So I'm not realizing yet what's going on. I thought, I think it's odd. And whenever you're brought to a point of oddness, cognitive dissonance, like you're going, what's happening here? You're at the precipice of two realities, right? The reality that you're in and the reality that you want that has your wish fulfilled. And when you start to realize that your wishes are being fulfilled 24 seven and what you're identifying within that moment is being played out. The other important thing that when I was thinking, when I was at the beach and I was thinking about um, how can I give myself that extra hour in the morning, I accepted the reality that I was in, meaning that if nothing changed, I knew what time I had to be out the door. So what could I do the night before to give myself that extra hour that I didn't feel pressured to get back because, you know, I was staying at a friend's condo. I have to clean everything up. I have to make it presentable just like it was when I arrived there. Uh, I have to make sure everything's packed and do the double check and, and all that wonderful stuff. So before the text came in, I was already saying, here's the reality that I'm in. I accept it to be what it is. How can I move things around with what I have to give me the outcome? So I'm already a cooperative component. I'm already advocating for myself having that extra hour. So then when I get home and now I notice that the flight is uh, delayed an hour, it didn't connect to me that it had something to do with what I've already just started. I started revising without even realizing I was revising because of the fact that I was in such acceptance of the reality that was. And that's really important. You can't get out of a reality into the another outcome if you're hollering or you're cursing or you're frustrated with the reality that you're in. And this cognitive dissonance never made me realize what was going on because my mind wanted to go, why did that happen? And it wanted to explore why that was happening, not realizing it was me, I'm the ground zero. Here's what I know for me, like in this now moment, I'm pushing out energy. I'm pushing out the energy as I'm recording this video that lots of people, right? The 100,000 subscribers are going to view this video and there's gonna be a, a very intentional video that you're really gonna get this and this, you're gonna be so excited about these success stories and now you want success stories of your own and you wanna share your success stories. So as I'm speaking these words about the story, all this is being pushed out for me to experience, for you to experience because I want us all to have amazing experiences. So as I was going about the rest of my night, I had uh, a snack. I was, I was watching a show. I was doing some coloring pages on, on my iPad. Um, it doesn't matter how long I'm somewhere or there's a beach. I'm never going to want to leave. I, I love my home. I love my family. But th the beach is my, my jam, right? That's, that's where I'm going to be. And for me to leave such a, a wonderful connected place, not that I'm not connected here, but that just really speaks to my heart. Uh, I'm, I'm home and the next thing you know, I get another text and now my, my plane is delayed another half hour. So now it's an hour and a half later than, um, what was, go what it was originally scheduled. And I'm like, how do they know this? How did they, right? Like there's a, they out there. How is this happening? What's, what's up with these planes and how are they that far off schedule 15 hours ahead of time? Like efficiency people, come on, what's going on here? And it didn't hit me yet. Right. So 
I finish up the night. I go to bed. I did all the stuff ahead of time. I get up in the morning. I go to the beach. I record it. I had a beautiful time there. There's no rush whatsoever. I have time to come back, make something to eat, clean up whatever other mess that I have to clean up. And I'm really, I can feel like I don't want to go. I'm like, do I want to stay? Do I want to stay a couple extra days? I can change my, my, my ticket. There's no rush for me to go home. Everybody would be understanding if I stayed another couple days. And that's when the third revision happened. I get another text, but this was so weird and so odd. My flight was delayed a third time, but this time for 10 minutes. And I'm like, wait a minute. If they're running 10 minutes off, they're not going to send a text that it's so now it's an hour and 40 minutes off. And I'm like, oh, and I remember there was a mirror on the wall and I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm changing the times. Not that I change the times of the flights, but I keep moving to a different reality that's allowing me to stay here more and more and more. And just like this, this is where we're going to wrap the sand dollar. Just like I wanted a sand dollar, but got a sandy dollar. If I'm saying I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave Florida. I got real clear that I don't want to stay in Florida and get stuck in an airport, right? I don't want to get to the airport and this keep happening. And now I'm stuck in an airport and I turned in the car and I'm like, whoa, okay, let me censor three deep breaths. And what I did was I realized that I had such an, a great time, no matter how long, even if I stayed another month, we're still going to be on the day that I have to leave. This is still going to be activated within me, right? So I just gave thanks for my wonderful trip. I gave thanks that my mind sees that I want to stay and it's showing me it's really gone. Okay. Do you really want this? Because if I did, I could choose it in that moment. I could choose it in that now moment and, and change everything and get to stay there and go to the beach and the pool another day. But I realized that I really did want to go home and no more time changes happened in, in the, uh, in the flights. I realized that's how in real time and, and because they're, there wasn't an attachment to it. It was really a pure desire. Like, oh, I want to go home, but I want to stay, but I want to go home. And obviously me staying was the stronger desire of the two. So you can kind of see sometimes how the desires kind of battle themselves out a little bit. And it needs for your mind needs for you to step in and go enough. This is the side of the coin I'm on. This is what's going to be happening. So I go say goodbye to the condo, lock it up, take the car back, drop it off. And when I got to my terminal, uh, it was pretty crowded already, right? Lots of people were there. I found a seat, especially one near where I could plug things in because I figured I'll, I'll play around a little bit on the iPad, but I might get some work done. And sitting next to me to my left, I was the third seat in from the the row. And then it was a long row all the way to the window. There were two uh, older ladies, maybe I'd say late 60s, early 70s, and they were just chatting away. And then there were two gentlemen to the right of me, uh, and they seemed to be together friends that uh, they were talking to each other. And the, my seat was the only seat on that row that I could get at the time. And the gentleman, this is, this is the bonus revision. This is the one that I'm doing in real time. This is the one that not only am I doing in real time, that there's a time frame and, and there's, and it's the time frame because we have to sit there for another 30, 40 minutes before we start boarding. And what was going on was fun at the beginning, but it started to get a little annoying. So as I'm sitting there, the man directly next to me was just very nervous and he's just all over the place and he's kicking his foot. And as he was doing this, his friend seemed to be totally, this must be the normal way he is and he's used to it. It didn't bother the ladies to my left. And initially it was fun because it felt like I was like on a rocking chair. But after a while, it was like not fun anymore. Like I, I didn't want that to be happening. And it, it, I noticed though, the more it aggravated me, the stronger he got in doing it. And then when I would do my deep breathing and calm myself down, he would calm, but he wouldn't stop. I think maybe one time he did for like 10 seconds. So next thing I know, the two women, I hear them say to each other, they're going to get up and they're going to go get something to eat. So these seats are open. And at that time that they were getting up to leave, I'm saying to myself, okay, what do I do here? I don't want this happening, but I don't want to have to say anything to anyone. I want to revise this real time because we may be here another half hour sitting and 
this will drive me crazy. So I looked and I felt like my mind said to me, once the women got up, because this happened simultaneously, you could move over a couple more seats, but it, it still was rocking. The whole row was rocking. I'm sure the further you got away from where he was, that it wasn't as, it was more subtle, but I was right next to him. And I'm like, no, that's not what I want to do. I am the operant power. This is my dream. And everyone is a dream character in my dream. And I want peace and, and happiness for everyone. And I can't give that to everyone. And I'm thinking, oh, no, if I'm getting too shook up, then is the, is the flight going to get delayed again? Like, I'm like, all oh, this is coming into my mind. Like, I'm like, all right, operant power time. I'm going to take some deep breaths. And when I come out of this deep breath, to everyone's benefit, this gentleman is going to stop his nervousness or his rocking or whatever he's doing. And he could stay or he can go. It doesn't matter to me. He could stay or go. But the rocking stops, right? This is so as I go in and I start my deep breathing and I when I come out of my resting as awareness, I now know I'm in that reality. And even though and when I came out, it didn't stop right away. I, I give it a few moments, right? Because we're on a time crunch and I'm the operant power. And, and I said this lovingly, but I said it very powerfully commanding it within myself. That's enough. No more of this. And then I heard the gentleman stand up. Well, I first felt him stand up and he said to his friend, I'm going to the bathroom and I'm going to grab something to eat. Do you want something? And his friend said, no. So now I have a seat next to me and two seats over here, not knowing if the women are going to come back. Are they going to sit here? If he's going to come back first? And my mind is offering all these things like what's going to happen? What's going I'm like, ah, 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 ah. thoughts, you are not in control. I'm the one. I'm the operant power. Thoughts are just offerings. I'm not taking any of those offerings. Because what I've done, I've done. And what I've asked for is calm. So I need to mirror the calm that I want to experience the rest of it. So I got myself nice and centered again. And it's none of my business if he comes back and he sits or who sits where. That's none of my business. I'm going to just go and do the thing that I'm doing. And I was quite enjoying the conversation of the people who were in the chairs behind me. So what happens next then, the, the friend he gets up, I guess he went to look for his friend or he didn't say what to tell anybody what he's doing. He just got up and went away. And the two women came back. And even though the seats to my left were still open, they chose to sit in the seats to my right where the two men were the first time. And I thought that's very interesting. And, but again, it's none of my business. Everything is calm and peaceful. And at that point, there was a point where I wanted to get up and say to everybody, I apologize. I'm the reason why the flight is an hour and 40 minutes late. But then I thought to myself, well, maybe for the rest of the people, this is just the time that it always was. And that would be totally unnecessary for me to do that. And it made me kind of laugh inside. And then I saw the two gentlemen come back. And we're not quite yet to boarding. But you can see up on the sign that maybe we're 10 minutes away from boarding. And the two seats are next to me, they're still open. So I just do another little revision where in my mind, I look and I see all the seats are taken. And I look and see that there's other seats that the gentleman can go sit in, but all the seats are taken next to me, even though they weren't, they were in my mind. So all I do is I shoot my mind a vision. This is what I see. Therefore, they're going to see what I see because now, not only did I see these seats filled, I went and looked through their eyes in my vision and saw them seeing that there was no seats here for me to, for them to sit in. And as a matter of fact, they didn't go anywhere else. They just stood there for the, even though there were other seats where they could have sat down, they didn't come in these and they didn't go anywhere else. So that is how, without saying anything to anyone, I got to revise the behavior of someone who was sitting next to me doing something that was okay in the beginning, but eventually it did get a little annoying. And I didn't want to sit there for 20 more minutes or 30 minutes and have to deal with that. And this is where in the now moment where your power is, when you know who you are, you know what you want, you realize what's going on. In those earlier examples, it was sort of like my mind starting to fulfill my my desire the first one with the sandy dollar wasn't quite it but thank you for that i'll take it but now let's here's the total revision here's the sand dollar that i want and then the next one with wanting to stay in florida knowing now that my thoughts were affecting again i wasn't changing any times per se i was just leveling up to realities where it was a different time. So it appeared like the times were changing. And the only way my mind could show me that was to send me a text, right? So you can kind of see how the mind bridges what's natural. It shows a natural way that it doesn't upset you. But it wasn't until that third text for 10 minute time change. I'm like, 
what the heck is this? It gets to the point, and at least my mind does this, when there's something that is so ridiculous happening, I'm realizing, uh-oh, what am I pushing out? Is this what I want to push out? Is this how my mind's interpreting this pushing out? Are we as the subconscious, and the, you know, I'm the conscious creator and the subconscious is just constantly 24 seven pushing out what I want. This is what it thinks I want. Let me get real clear. Let me get real clear in the now moment, folks. And this is how revision works. So I hope these success stories were uh, very, very um, ev self-evident to you. So folks, this, this is the success stories and it just goes to show you as the opera and power, that's why the now moment is so important where whether you've asked for something and what you get, you know, it's not quite. Now there are times when I ask for something and if something similar shows up, I'm fine with that. But there are times when I ask for something and I want that specific thing and I can get real detailed in how specific I want and I want that to show up. So I don't mind a variation if I'm open to variation. But if I ask for something and I want something specific, then bring me what I want because I'm the operant power. And that's what I wanted to show you that you can command your reality that way. So these are my success stories. If you have a success story and you would love to share it. I'd love to share that, especially if it has something to do with the videos here that you're watching on the channel that helped you change what you're doing. And I'm going to ask you one last thing. What well, I'm going to ask you a few things. One, make a promise that when you're watching these videos, you're not just learning more techniques and concepts. Make a promise to yourself and to me that you're going to put into practice what it is that we talk here. And could you please, I appreciate you deeply, to like this video, sh share the channel, subscribe to the channel. Hey guys, I know you're out there watching. And we have lots of watchers and I would love for you guys to become subscribers. That would be such an amazing paycheck of the heart, if you will. Um, that that's a way that, you know, I know when I go and I'd like and subscribe to a channel that it's really something I'm doing to help them grow and to help them expand. So if you would f be so kind and, and I'm deeply appreciative because we are exploding this channel and there's going to be more and more wonderful revision videos, manifestation videos, success stories. And I'm so thankful that you're here and that you're watching. Please share with all your friends. Please share in all the different communities that you are part of. And if you haven't yet joined us on Facebook, we have a private uh, Facebook group, the Invincible CEO Circle. All the links are in the description box below. Also, there is a wonderful website. My website is www.theinvinciblecEO.com. There's wonderful blog over there with some great ideas. We have a store. So if there are digital products or services of mine that you would be interested in, please check those out. So thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for allowing me to share my journey. I look forward to getting to know you better. And that's why we're all here. We're all here to win and win big all the time. All right, guys, until next time. Thanks for being here.